How's everybody today? Pete here at Spawn Fly Fish, and we have a fun, fun fly for you guys today. So, last couple videos, we've been getting into some different streamers, and the last one we touched on the Heisenberg. We did the Heisenberg for Halloween. So, it's about time, like I've, I've talked before, break down a pattern, find the stuff that, that applies to you, and then incorporate that into your own pattern. So that's what we're gonna do today. We're gonna th be thinking Heisenberg for the core or the, the platform, and then we're gonna make this Heisenberg work for us, specifically in our rivers for Coho. So in the vise, I've got the SA280 from A-Rex in a size two. Just got some six aught chartreuse thread, 140, whatever you've got handy, fantastic. So let's just get that started and trim out this tag end. So there's there will be some differences here from the standard Heisenberg. Keep that in mind. However, again, none of this is, is difficult. None of this is actually new. For the most part, if you've been watching, it's just a little different, right? It's not the way we put it together last time. So, skipping that marabou tail, we're going spawn polywog tail in fluorescent chartreuse. And I'm going to use you know, roughly three fourths of this tail, somewhere in there, five eighths, whatever you want to call it. And get that wrapped down all the way back to where we gave ourselves that little indicator. And then simply trim this unnecessary part out here at the tip and finish tying all that good stuff down and crank it back all right so at this point you know typically we have two colors of marabou going for for a heisenberg tail or or any number of different tails we've been doing lately but here we go solid color all right so this is where it gets fun i i like the joker coloration which is purple chartreuse and white and so sticking with that mentality or color theme we're gonna have some fun today so here I've got some fly, a crystal flash in purple and pearl. And I've got roughly three strands of each. And so, again, keep in mind, purple, chartreuse, white. What, what's Pete going to do with that? Well, let's show you. So let's get this flash, this crystal flash tied in here on both sides of that polylog tail. Nothing crazy, nothing difficult. All right, so at this point, I just want that flash to match with the length of the tail. Go ahead and give it an angled cut, right? So, voila, I'll show you. Now we've got flash both sides of that tail, perfect. All right, so now let's get some, some fun stuff tied in. So much like the regular Heisenberg, going with some schlop in here for our hackle, but I've got one Shop and feather in white, and then one shop and feather in purple, and I've put them on top of each other. So when I tie these in, they will be essentially one feather. I've trimmed those tip portions out and given myself a nice clean tie in section. So let me get those tied in. I don't need all this little section here, so I'll just trim those out and tie down. Great. Now we need some core material, if you will, something for that body to give that hackle something to grab into. And simple, we're going pearl tinsel chenille. So again, these are these are just colors that get the coho excited. All that good stuff, salmon and, and you know even some steelhead. But by all means, the, what I'm trying to get through to you guys is take a pattern, learn it. Great. Once you're once you're done learning it and you've mastered that pattern, kind of incorporate it into what works for you. This is what works for me on our rivers. And so great, I can tie the Heisenberg, and there's a lot of application for that fly, but specifically for what I'm going to be chasing in the next couple of weeks, why not customize or tailor that to exactly what you're trying to, to accomplish, right? If you, if you know you need a purple fly, well, you're going to be fishing out there for a while with that red one until the red becomes the, the hot fly. So you'd probably have more success if you fish the purple that you know is working, right? All right. So here we now have our two schlappen feathers. And very carefully, take your time. Space wraps 
not touching. Looking maybe three or four wraps here. And keeping in mind that we've got other stuff to add. I told you we'd be playing a little bit today. So if you're, if you're tying at home, don't get ahead of me. Otherwise, you might have to undo a couple steps. All right, so we've got our shop and tied off. I'm going to go ahead and trim out the butt sections. And definitely there's, you know, enough fiber or material coming off of those feathers still to be useful for something. I'm not sure what, but if you're a frugal tire, by all means, don't throw that away. All right. See how much space I've left here? It's considerable. It's, I would call that a full eye length in space behind the eye. Why? All right. So as you guys know, it's time for legs, but we're going to, we're going to, add another element after that too. So here I've got some grizzly micro legs in fluorescent chartreuse. So as you can see, it's going to kind of keep together with the tail and all that good stuff. And yeah, you could veil this over your thread and tie it in. And that's a great way to do it. But just for this one, let's just tie this old school, go right in there, make sure it's almost to the end of the, the tail there. And at that point, just go ahead and grab those, those rubber legs and with your thread, pull them onto your side and then trim to match my side with the end of the tail. Nothing to it. Great. So at this point on the regular Heisenberg, you'd be tying off a little cement, all that good stuff. Well, this is no ordinary Heisenberg. So now let's get into some fun. So here we've got a little bit of marabou. What I've done, this is simply a, a blood quill marabou feather, not spay, not anything fancy. And this is, of course, chartreuse, but I've gone ahead and trimmed that tip in for a clean tie-in. But I've also eliminated one side of the fibers. Now, which side? This, this side is the underside, the concave. On my side, or looking upward, is the convex, or top of the feather. And so I'm going to remove the left portion if I were looking at the convex top. And you'll see why here in a second. Maybe once I get this tied in, it'll just make more sense to show you. So again, carefully tie that in because we did trim out. And so this quill now is, you know, I don't want to use the word fragile, but it's, it's fragile. You can't, you can't go crazy on it. So get it tied in. No mussing, no fussing. Just that's it. Next, well, next is wrap some of this marabou. And so the reason I don't use the full feather here is you, you've got to be aware of how much coverage you're going to achieve. If I were using that full feather, it would already be too much considering the space I have to work in. So there's a method to this madness and now you know. All right, let's get this tied in or tied off, I should say, and see how we're doing. Carefully, carefully trim out that marabou quill. Spin this back, see how we're, yeah, I'm liking this so far. All right, so let's go ahead and very neatly finish that thread head for our hook portion and hook finish. Fiber, but it's not bothering us too badly. We'll we'll let it go. One whip finish, and because I like to be prepared, two whip finishes. Spin that around. Get access to that thread. Don't cut the leg. Don't cut the fibers from the marabou. You worked so hard to put it in there. Leave it alone. All right. So you can see, we've got a lot of flow now incorporated into this fly and the, you know one of the things i really enjoy about the heisenberg is that hackle for the the internal parts of the body which don't allow for a full collapse of the profile so keeping that in mind do i need to push a lot of water for coho nope i need it to be silky and move and have movement even when i'm in the pause motion or pause segment of stripping a streamer and so by having the schlopping on the inside, now when I put that little bit of marabou around it in an umbrella sort of effect, since I know that schlopping can't 
fully collapse and stay. It's got to spring back just a touch every once in a while. So too with that marabou, except now those fingers at the end are going to start waving again. And you want to talk hypnotizing a fish, that's how you do it. All right, so again, one thing I like to do is keep in mind, this is going to be hook point up. So I'll remove it from the vise, hook point up. And then when I go to reattach, I'll remember which is which, even though the hook will tell me if I forget. All right, so now we're getting into the front portion of this fly, and I've got a spawn 60 degree jig shank, 30 millimeter, and then I've also got the spawn super tungsten slotted bead, which is a 6.3 millimeter or quarter inch of tungsten goodness. So we've got to keep that bead in place. Of course, I've got some wire sitting here. And you know me, I'm going to try to get that whole deal wrapped so that I have an even underbody. But for now, let's just get this going. All right. So I've got some lead-free 0.025 wire here. I'm just gonna get that tied in. Let me round that front edge where I just cut. Nothing to it. Push that into the back portion of that bead. So now you'll see all I have to do is continue wrapping this wire. Hopefully I've got enough. I think, I think we'll be just fine. And now all I'm doing is making sure that, that last wrap doesn't interfere with the arm coming down. And that's it right there. I'll go ahead and trim and round over once again with my wire cutting scissor. Pretty cool. Even underbody. Let's get this thread going and we can close this arm now and we're going to need to just kind of help it for a second with our off tying hand by pinching between the thumb and, and index finger. And still got some gap to close there. There we go. Really crank down on that. Make sure it's closed all the way. No issues. Now I'm going to use angled wraps to start covering up some of that wire and 45 degree angles what it's what I'm shooting for and then once I have a nice base of, of thread there I'll go ahead and come in with my head-on or straight wraps of thread and solidify all those X's that we have formed with the 45 degree. All right now we are into some braid specifically today I'm using spider wire, any braid would work, any connection wire would be great, whatever makes you happy. So 50 pound though, going big on this one. Plan on catching some, some monster coho this year. You don't go out trying to catch small fish, right? There we go, get that tight in. All right, so again, in keeping with the, the theme here, we do have 3D beads in white, and this is standard size, not that small one that we used last time. These are these are the regular size or standard, if you will. And get that second one slipped on like so. Make sure that my wire is not spinning around on me, or turning. And then here we've got our, our hook portion. I'm gonna put the wire through the bottom and then come back so you see how all that's gonna sit. But one thing we do have to do before we get too crazy is put that wire or spider wire, if you will, back through those beads. There's one, hopefully that's two. Keep that sucker in the proper orientation, which is not twisted, not flipping over itself. And again, we do wanna leave just enough room so that when this sits behind the closed arm of that shank. The beads aren't gonna to touch exactly. There's room for, for movement. That's what we want. And again, yes, you want that fly to the hook to be able to swing a little bit off the, off the back, but also what happens in the water is if you do give yourself enough room, those beads hit each other when you're stripping a fly. And for a lot of fish, that is a huge indicator of something that's injured and all that good stuff. And they will come over to investigate. Well. By the time they see this fly moving around and bouncing and, and breathing and wiggling, forget it, game over. They're eating that sucker. So leave the space. 
All right, let's trim out the tag ends of our braid. And we can get started on tying this thing. All right, by all means, if you really wanted to, you could come in with a little bit of a collar here, again with that marabou. But to me, it's gonna block some of the, the beads and some of the effect that has as far as a, a visual. And then it's also gonna convolute a little bit the marabou in the back. So it's up to you, use your discretion. Size of fly that you're tying might uh, predicate whether you do or do not add that. All right, so now kind of that wash, rinse, repeat portion of, of tying these flies. And so we're just gonna repeat some of these steps that we just did. So once again, here is schloppen in both purple and white, tied in at the same time, up into it. And let's come back in with some pearl tinsel chenille and get that tied in. Get those feathers out of the way as best I can for you guys. Forgive my fingers for a second. All right, so now we've secured in our tinsel or chenille. And get that wrapped up. So not only does this provide Again, the attraction of, of the pearl and the flash that's in the tinsel chenille, but it's offering support or even more a, a home for that schloppen to sit in so that it's, it's not just slipping or it has the ability to slip, if you will, on bare thread. So adding that little cushion of chenille or dubbing is, is oftentimes a practical move. It's not just a, an aesthetic, if you will. All right, so let's get this shropping going here. Again, we're looking for spaced wraps. And just keep working it up, brushing back those fibers, every wrap that we take, so that nobody's getting trapped, all that good stuff. All right, so this, uh, I do want a little bit fuller, not much. You see how much room is left there? Let's call that good. Let's not get greedy and just kind of create the space here where the fibers meet the quill. And that's what we're looking for to bring that thread right between them. Jiggle that thread a little bit if you want. Make sure nothing's getting trapped. I mean, I think I see a trapped fiber, but we will find out shortly. All right, thread in front. And now carefully, carefully get in there and trim out those schlopping quills. So I've got two fibers here. If you peel them down, they'll follow the quill that you just cut and you should have no issue. All right, so here we are once again in the front, creating a space that is, you know, roughly a, a good hook eye. And I don't think we need any flash in here. I, I'm really liking just how much difference in the, the contrast there is. So let's let's not even mess with that flash. I think it's unnecessary. Let's just get our next set of legs tied in. And again, as long as these reach past the halfway point and they get past that uh, connection beads, those those two beads that are in the middle, then then that's great. You don't need anything super crazy as far as length on these, these legs. Make sure they're on the sides and call it good. Like so, nothing to it. And bring them all up. Now this is one thing I do like is all the legs to be the same. And so you see how they're reaching well past those beads there, just give that trim. So that now it's not gonna interfere with that hook no matter what. All right, and so last step here, I once again have another marabou feather trimmed for the tie-in and then peeled. As I'm looking at the top of that feather, the left side has been removed so that we get a much flowier look as far as not going super concentrated on any one color. We're letting all the colors play together so that if you see one, you see all three. At least that's the goal. All right, at this point, just take your time and wrap that sucker until you think it is full enough. Again, this is this is subjective. Some people like bigger flies, some people like smaller flies. At the end of the day, it's your fly. Do what makes you happy.
unless you're tying for a contest or somebody else. Well, then you got to tie what makes them happy. So that's pretty rare. All right, there we go. Got those fibers peeled away from the quill, create the V, and then put that thread right in the V you made. And let's get a couple nice clean wraps here before we trim out the butt end of our quill. Ha oh, ha I really like the looks of this. And guess what? So will the salmon. I would I would wager that you could get more than one bass to eat this as well. So tie a little smaller. Yes, this color scheme works very well for trout. And let's get some whip finishes here. So I don't know if I'm done now tying the this version or what you'll have, whatever you want to call it, of the Heisenberg, but I do know as of today, I'm very happy with this fly. And that is going to make me fish it well, and it's going to lead to success on the water, and that's what we like. All right, little head cement here. I'm yapping too much looking at this fly. And let's just get some head cement and coat all those thread wraps. Try not to get any on the marabou. If you didn't didn't know already, Marabou loves head cement, but it's not a good combo. And there we go. So that is my take on kind of taking a Heisenberg and making it work once again for the water I'm going to fish, for the species I'm going to chase. So there you have it sort of a Heisenberg tied in some amazing coho colors. So I sure hope you guys had fun with this one. I know I did. If you did enjoy, please hit like, please hit subscribe, and we will see you guys on the water.